Okay, so this book, um, it has, it's, it's actually, there's a, there's a lot of poems in it that have to do with adoption, but the larger theme, I'm adopted, the larger theme is really about kinship and connection, um, not only among people, but with all creatures and manifestations of creation. So I'm going to mostly read, well, I'm just going to read a few from this book and, and then a few new ones. Um, <clears throat> Oh, but I'm going to start with um, a poem that I wrote like 25 years ago that it just, I still like it, and it rhymes, and it just feels nice, so. Okay, The Bird and the Moon. Do you know if the birds sleep? Those nights when just the silver crescent peaks, I have seen one swoop behind the hill and scoop the sinking sliver in its beak. Or that time in early May, I saw one carry the moon away, a crow. They go for those shiny things. One sweep of, its, of their black wings can erase its whole face. Okay, and then that moves to... Um, the absence. A special burden they release, the pines, when in June their scented pollen falls yellow, dulls the lame sheen of cars parked under them, and dusts the silky lake. Every grief and chipmunk set a footprint. Fish kiss at water's surface, leaving moments of dark clarity that vanish, like pricks of ache that needle me yet I cannot explain or grasp them. Yes, I grabbed for her, what could I do? She was there, and where were you? She fed me juicy orange quarters, and I grinned with orange teeth. She fed me under trees, she let me drink the water. I studied it so carefully, for slightest flicker showing from beneath. And now, um, a series of poems about birds and flowers, also kin. Robins. <clears throat> a trickle of sweetness out of the quiet emerges, announcing what night had again prepared. How darkness works. You come to know this each time you are taken by it and released. Blue hour. I wake in dark to open curtains, windows, then the door, to see the young leaves heave and be a green so yellow, while the wind occurs and stills and stirs again like thought. To hear the day erupt its arcs and towers from the flats of dawn. There is no other music like this song you can walk through these cries that every day erect a new cathedral over daily streets. 50 grackles. Several hang sideways on the feeder pole. One or two settle on the gravel, then another and another cascade from the tree canopy until a black and restless pool of them collects. Cannot say what causes them to rush away at once and in minutes drift back, iridescence by iridescence. All day long, something like wind passes through open windows into the midst of brooms and thinking. And then the last one I'll read from this book is called Sunflower Ramble. <clears throat> Stepping off path into Cricket's unrelenting surrounding, and night's airs rushing through cliques, through thickets of ferns uprising, through brambles of hearts' questions shivering outward in wind, but holding their own like electrons in an atom charged. Up and down the sunflower row under yellow heads looming, the spaces between them shifting with walking, 
Here's a delicate thrill in room after room of articulate shape for crickets and shadows, the shelter of which, such as Einstein maintained, all space is compassion. To each flower, high or low, hello. And what do you do all night beneath this negligible moon? What frightens me is that they're unsurpassed, and might they tell me that they love me in my urgency tonight? They loll, they roll in the breeze, still tall, they don't leave. <coughs> but in this absence of light, what do you do? They are yet so bright, it stings me. Okay. I'm going to now go just to a few new ones, skipping into new tones, too, I think. Things that cats kill. When a bird dies, the unnatural quietness of its body attracts me, as though it were a photograph of itself, presented just for me, like those gifts from my husband, the photographer, the way he places them before me to show me his most severe essence. And this bird, yesterday, it was a chickadee in the brown leaves among fiddleheads still unfurling, its black cap intact, the intimacy of its underwing offered to my gaze. In the afternoon wind, the tiny feathers lifted and settled. Oh, there is nothing, not a heartbeat. And I, oh, the breath is never ceasing. I was grateful for this little murder. And this one, this is sort of an adoption poem, too, but it's not in the book, it's a new one. I, I got into looking um, at the etymology of the word waif, and uh, it, it has a fascinating long history, and some of the, some of the history is, is kind of alluded to in the poem. Um, the earliest origin of the word uh, means to turn, to vacillate, to tremble ecstatically waif. She tugs at me with skinny arms. She wanders. She tells me in thin language that she wanders night and day as a ghost would. She's looking for a rooted stone. A hard seat is what she's used to. She wants one now with her name on it. Please. She's friendly enough. She waves at other travelers. She sometimes flaps her arms. They walk over her, through her, she wonders why. She listens to the mothering of leaves. It's her miracle, she says, that I have seen her. What gave me the eyes? She can tell me who she is. She's eager, she has traced herself. Invisible child, begat by a discarded thing, begat by a wavering flag and loot dropped by a thief. Again and again, her ancestors vacillated. They went astray, their lives passed to and fro. It all began, so the story goes, with a release. It happened the way a morning breeze sends off the scent of an early flower. Let's see. Okay, three more. Here come, these are two poems about rain. I seem to write a lot about rain and wind. There. And sometimes both together. Um, poem after downpour. Looking out through the inward ache as though I were a window curtained, while inside a deep pool like a dining table glimmering with polish draws my attention until the skies up there release a waterfall of rain from some celestial river into a thousand leaves of copper that quiver like a cat caressed, a woman loosing her hair, whispery as wind, and then there is wind, and then nothing more but laden so that the two worlds are similarly shimmering. And this one, a night storm not heard because of the window fan. 
The fog in the yard come morning sends a small bolt through me, and I am the opposite of fog. The vapors hang loosely, the light slides in so that I see the fog and through the fog. I'm wrapped in shears of dampness, the garden is pale, I am not sure the walls beyond are solid anymore. Leaves begin to shimmer with still wetness. Flat, translucent plates, more dense than fog, admit the light their own way, keeping some for themselves. A small breeze comes, then stillness, then again the fresh breath. Each wind sends down a curtain of clear beads that tap as they touch whatever they touch and interweave the easygoing fog, which is just lifting. And this last one is not new, but um, I like to end with it. Kind thoughts. All my girls grew up to be weeds. There's the tall one strolling through grass. She skirts the trees and flirts with sun. And the one who never leaves the yard. She studies the bees with her sharp blue eyes. And the one named Rose, they try to offer her bouquets. She roams along the seashore and the forest's edge, spending her petals on the chance to be enough. Thank you.